Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bus Monday. This week we're going to be looking at the idea that fresh fruits and vegetables are healthier and more nutritious than frozen fruits and vegetables. Uh, so first, why do people think that fresh is better? I think it mostly just stems from the idea that fresh implies less processed and less processed implies healthier. And of course, while highly processed, highly refined foods can and often do contribute to overconsumption of calories and the replacement of nutrient rich foods with nutrient devoid foods, uh, food processing has also helped improve our collective health um, in many ways, such as by providing easily accessible nutrition for infants, elderly, and pregnant women. And just looking at this graph from Weaver and colleagues, it's clear that collectively, canned and frozen fruits and veggies do in fact make up a greater contribution to total nutrient intake than fresh fruits and vegetables, at least amongst these nutrients and in the US. And this is probably just due to their convenience and affordability. And enriching and fortifying foods with added nutrients through processing can drastically reduce nutrient deficiencies compared to relying on just naturally occurring nutrients alone. And the red arrows emphasize the nutritional gap between naturally occurring foods and enriched processed foods. Um, so the bottom line is, while I think food processing is to blame for many of our overconsumption patterns as a society, I don't think we should throw out the baby with the bathwater and assume that any level of processing is always bad. And of course, there are levels to food processing. At the top, you have very minimally processed foods, so say just simply washing and packaging fruits and veggies. Uh, another level down, you have simple preservation methods, so things like canning tuna or freezing fruits and vegetables. And then as you move even further down, you start to get into the, in my opinion, potentially more problematic levels of processing, so stuff like like TV dinners and frozen pot pies. Uh, so processing doesn't equal bad in all cases, uh, but what does the science have to say about fresh versus frozen fruits and vegetables specifically? Uh, let me just start out by saying that there definitely are nutritional differences between these categories, and it's complicated because as it turns out, which method is better seems to depend on what fruit and vegetable you're looking at. Uh, for example, looking at this 2017 analysis from Linen colleagues, beta carotene content, a precursor for vitamin A, was higher in fresh broccoli than frozen broccoli, but actually lower in fresh compared to frozen corn, and lower in fresh green peas compared to frozen green peas. Um, so first, I think it's important to clarify that even amongst fresh produce, uh, there can be differences in terms of nutrition, uh, because you can consume a fruit or vegetable freshly picked right off the tree, um, so say something like from a fresh farmer's market or a roadside fruit stand, uh, or you can consume something that was picked and sat in the back of a truck, uh, then sat in the grocery store until you bought it. And while research has suggested that all else equal, the longer the transportation and the storage time, uh, the worse the nutrient quality tends to be, um, even this isn't 100% accurate uh, because in reality, there are so many other factors that can come into play, uh, like the specific fruit or vegetable you're talking about, uh, the soil quality, season, weather, uh, the growing methods used, uh, the ripeness of the, the fruit or veggie when harvested, post-harvest handling, um, and on and on. And according to one nutrition report from Harvard, the vitamin and mineral content of fruits and veggies depends on decisions and practices all along the food system, from seed to table, whether or not that system is local or global. Uh, so it is complicated, but to give us something a little bit more tangible to go on, let's take a closer look at the results of that 2017 Lynn paper. So this study compared the nutritional content of various fruits and veggies in three groups, fresh, frozen, and fresh stored, where the fresh stored group represents fresh produce after sitting in the fridge for five days. And the authors note that this is an important consideration since fresh produce may often remain in the consumer's home for a number of days prior to consumption. Since, like I said, it's been suggested from earlier research that storage of fresh produce can decrease nutrient quality. Now looking at the table for ascorbic acid, or vitamin C, we can see that for broccoli, fresh and frozen come out just about exactly the same, while fresh stored was a bit worse. And this pattern followed for corn, green peas, and strawberries. Yet, just taking spinach for example, vitamin C was highest in the fresh group, then lower for the fresh stored, and then the lowest for frozen. Yet when looking at the folate content in spinach, it was the opposite. More folate was found in the frozen spinach than in both fresh groups. So what do we make of all this noise? Well, the authors summed it up by saying that all in all, the majority of comparisons yielded no significant difference. And in the cases of significant differences, there was generally a consistent observation of five days of refrigerated storage having a negative association with nutrient concentration. And ultimately, our findings do not support the common perception 
argument that fresh produce is nutritionally superior to frozen produce. And other research has supported this conclusion. One 2007 review notes that losses of nutrients during fresh storage may be more substantial than consumers realize. Depending on the commodity, freezing and canning processes may preserve nutrient value. But ultimately, a diet filled with diverse fruits and vegetables is ideal. The results presented here suggest that canned, frozen, and fresh fruits and vegetables should all continue to be included in dietary guidelines. So to conclude, and borrowing from the conclusions of a science-based medicine article from Dr. Stephen Novella, the most nutritious produce is the produce you will actually eat. Even the worst fruits and vegetables still have a higher nutrient density than other types of food. If affordable and convenient produce allows you to eat more, that's more important than slight incremental gains in some nutrients, but not others, by obsessing over the details. So bringing this full circle, I would say the idea that fresh fruits and vegetables are across the board healthier and nutritionally superior to frozen or canned fruits and veggies is busted. I think the best advice is to simply have a diet filled with a variety of different fruits and vegetables of different colors and from various sources of production. And as long as you're focusing on variety and consistency, you'll be getting enough nutrients from these foods to reap their nutritional benefits. Now, one thing I didn't mention here is cooking method, and there is some interesting science uh, to cover there. Um, so just let me know if you'd like to hear me cover that in a future video, and I'll do my best to do that. Uh, but for now, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for here. Uh, before we go, guys, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Uh, Skillshare is an online learning community designed to help creators turn their passion into a full-time profession. Um, so whether you wanna step up your photography game for Instagram, uh, learn the ins and outs of running an online business or just start making more money running an online business, uh, Skillshare, I think, is the perfect resource for it. Um, Skillshare gives you access to more than 19,000 professional classes in videography, photography, uh, web development, business, productivity, um, and on and on. Uh, so I'd like to recommend two courses to you guys that I think you'll find very helpful. Uh, the first is Visual Storytelling with Final Cut Pro, second edition, which has 37 classes explaining the ins and outs of my preferred editing software. And the other is Fundamentals of DSLR Photography, which is another thing that I think is really important for increasing production value here on YouTube, uh, Instagram, or really anywhere else where you're sharing photos or video. Uh, so a premium membership usually begins around 10 bucks a month. Um, however, for viewers of this channel, Skillshare is gonna offer the first 699 people to click the first link in the description box, two months of Skillshare uh, for just 99 cents. And I think that in those two months, you could easily learn the new skills that you may need to take your editing or photography or business skills up to the next level. So make sure you go and check out that link in the description. Uh, I really think that you guys will find it to be helpful. And I just wanna say thanks again, guys, so much for watching. Uh, if you did like the video or find it helpful, don't forget to leave me a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you happen to be new. And I will see you guys all here two Mondays from today.